know I passed that test and didn't have to take a, a dumb guy English. <laughs> or history one. It wasn't a room this big, but it was big. And the guy was giving an audiovisual presentation of something, you know, like here's Haynes Hall, and this is the, the coop, this is where we eat. It was either something like that or something to do with the subject. And I was in the back of the room, of course, and, you know, sort of nodding like this and nervous. You know, I was tr 17, very troubled. And uh, I leaned back, and boom, the projector went out. You know, I hit it. <laughs> and, and it didn't work again. And, you know, people were looking back at me, and I was this nervous little fat fellow with glasses. <laughs> where I was back there. And I remember that, and I remember my last... Uh, class. It was, it was, you know, I went to school like here for seven years or so. I can't remember how long it was. I never took the right things. You know, I was always looking for public health five and the history of theater arts to Mickey me my way through. And uh, so I, I didn't have any of the, many of the requirements. My counselor sort of let me down or I didn't know who he was. And anyway, I was trying to take a performance requirement. This was when I was uh, older and it was at night. I was already a professional musician. I'd made an album or two of them, I think. And I was going to take a Balinese gamelan class to try and fulfill this requirement, you know, remaining true to my tradition of taking these, these uh, totally horrible Mickeys to get through school. And, and uh, I was there one night. I had my brother going with me. I had my girlfriend going with me to make sure I'd go. You know, it was a nighttime class. My girlfriend was playing the gongs, and this guy was in, in all the wrong places. You know, it was very important, the, the gong and this, this sort of thing. She'd hit it like this, and he'd go like this. But she was doing it for me, and it was, it was all very nice. So one night, I went up to the... I was the only professional musician in the class. It was housewives, straight housewives, it looked like. And I was playing an instrument called the Chang Chang, that you go like this... And I was having trouble with it, you know. I said, you know, I, I sort of can't keep up. You know, I can't... I can't, can't Play the straight eights or sixteenths, whatever the hell it was. And he didn't even know what sixteenth notes were. But anyway, this 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 housewife comes over and says, "No, you do it like this," and goes like this. And I never went back. You know, I I just couldn't take the uh, humiliation. I remembered some teachers. I had a, a, a music teacher named Demaray, whom I liked very much. He, he thought I was a bum, you know, but that I had a lot of talent. That I just he actually called me a bum. That I didn't work hard, and I didn't work hard. I I, I sort of. You know, if I couldn't find a place to park here, I'd keep going. And, and, uh, <laughs> I don't think I batted 500 in going to class. And I regret it. You know, there was stuff I learned despite myself. You know, I, got, I remember an orchestration class. Boy, I'm really rambling on here, just like Walter Mondale. <laughs> and and uh, uh, where I got to hear something for, uh, written for the orchestra for the first time, an, an arrangement of La Cucaracha it was, I remember for Kelly James, who's passed on since. Uh, I had a teacher named Newman in English whom I liked very much. Uh, Hoxie, who was a history teacher. I don't know whether he's still around, but I liked that class. And it was a good book, uh, Palmer. Wrote, uh, I just discovered it in the last... It was always like, in the last two days before the final, I discovered, you know, this isn't so bad. You know, why didn't I do it all year? You know? I mean, this book is actually kind of good. But it was always too late. And then I, I still have recurrent dreams about forgetting about a class, an anthropology class, you know, and forgetting what room and day it is, that all of a sudden, you know, it's the day before the final. I just had one of those a couple of weeks ago. Uh, what else? I used to sit in front of the art building, and there were these Lipschitz statues there. I don't know whether they're still there. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of big to move, I guess. But I thought it was a temporary exhibition. It was like for a year. And people would come up, and I'd be sitting there on the steps, and they'd ask, you know, what does that mean? And I'd look, and I'd say, well, it's, you know, two birds having intercourse. <laughs> Sometimes I'd tell them it was a sea serpent, or a, a, and they thought I was a guy. <laughs> you know, I'd sit there in the sun. It was real nice. It was a happy, happy time for me. Uh, it, was mainly, it was mainly sort of slogging through, however, you know, all this sort of colorful stuff. It was, a, you know... Uh, philosophy uh, six, an hour of is the bee a domesticated animal, and uh, and make you want to go run screaming up the aisle. But in general, I learned stuff here uh, despite myself. Are the kelps still here? You know, the guys in little funny hats, the spirit organization. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, hearing all that homecoming stuff really got me revved up and gave me the old school spirit I never had. And anyway, I'll take uh, whatever questions there might be. If there are any, if you don't have any, I'll just take off. <laughs> what are, the, what are, the, are there? Over oh. here. Yeah, okay. Um, your songs make a definite social statement. 
And I was wondering whether you feel that should be a goal for most songwriters today or whether you think it's important. <clears throat> it's important to say something uh, to me rather than I love you, you love me, we're as happy as we can be, you know, what are we going to do? <laughs> Uh, I don't. I, I would be at, bi at a bit of a loss to know what the definite. You know, I don't think it's going to make my stuff is going to make the world any better, uh, but but I I like to try and say something. Yes. Next. Sorry about the answer, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all over here, right? They told me right and left, right and left, but there's nobody interested in the left. Okay. I was just interested in who you listen to, who are your performers that you listen to. I like. Uh, the Pretenders, uh, Chrissy Hind is a very good writer, Neil Young, Van Morrison, I like Prince. Uh, I listen to classical music mostly, uh, except a cassette in the car, Fats Domino, Fats Wall, anybody named Fats I like. <laughs> What's this, on TV? Ooh, glad I did it. I've become such a hack, you know, entertainment tonight, I'm doing anything. <laughs> I don't know what's become of me. Go on. Uh, I just like, uh, I really like your I Love LA video, and I was just Thank curious, you. who is the girl in the red convertible with you, and why isn't she here today with you? It's not her. <laughs> uh, she, she would have been here if she'd known that more than 120 people were gathered. <laughs> her name's Laura Howard. She's Miss Cypress. She's, I think she's 20 now. And she's a model. They found her in a redhead, you know there's a redheads club, so if any of you are redheads, you can join it. And uh, that's where they uh, uh, found her. She's a very nice girl. Not, she's not a big, nasty redhead at all, <laughs> as I found to my dismay. <laughs> okay, uh, I've got uh, two questions oh, over, over here. here. Other two, side. Sorry. Uh, other no, side. go ahead. Other side. <laughs> I know, oh, over here. <laughs> I have two questions. My first question is... Yeah. Uh, I know that uh, Mama Told Me Not to Come was covered by Three Dog Night. Right. Has anybody ever covered any of your other material? Oh, yeah. Uh, Linda Ronstadt, Barbara Streisand, uh, a lot of people have. Three, uh, 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 blood, Sweat, and Tears. Gee, all these people are almost uh, comatose, let me think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it happens all the time, that, that uh, sort of thing. Neil Diamond, wait a minute, I've got to think of someone who's under 86 years old. <laughs> Not much lately, you know, I sort of drifted out of the mainstream. You know, it's going to be difficult for Julio Iglesias to do Christmas in Cape Town. Or, uh... <laughs> but it has, it, uh, it has happened and, and uh, hopefully will, will continue to happen. Okay, I had just one more short question. Sure. I know in your concerts you always juxtapose a very serious song with a humorous song. Uh, why have you picked that formula? Well, it's just, you know, sort of a, a, a putting on a show. You go fast and slow. Fa I, th I didn't know whether they were serious or, you, you know, do a couple of fast ones, then a slow one. It's very difficult pacing. You know, it takes years to learn. But that's, that's, that's all. I, I hadn't noticed one was funny and one was... But every once in a while, I like to hear people laughing to know I'm sort of doing all right. You know? <laughs> Thank you. Sure, pleasure. Uh, right? I, know, I, I know you've been asked this before, but how do you feel about the way short people was misconstrued as a serious uh, satire <coughs> instead of um, a joke. Surprised me. It seems so obvious that the uh, yeah, to me too, narrator of the song was insane. You know, I mean, there's no, <laughs> there's, there's no sort of uh, conspiracy against short people. I genuinely grew to hate short people, you know, after all this. <laughs> <little. laughs> but it, it was a bit exaggerated. Most people got it, you know, that it was a joke. Okay. <laughs> you have a play in production right now, and I was just wondering who's, who is responsible for the idea and seeing it through? And also, are you more comfortable with stage work, or do you prefer writing and recording your music? Uh, I prefer anything to writing. I mean, I'd rather be here than, and I, than, than, and I'm enjoying this, actually. But, but uh, uh, I don't like to write. It's very sort of hard on me once, until once I get going. The stage thing was started by Joan uh, Silver in New York, and they did a version there which I saw, which I didn't like. It was so cute, you know. There was a bunch of people running around with Broadway voices being cute on stage. I didn't care much for it. This version is considerably better. I would, I would uh, recommend it. I would also recommend that they lower their ticket prices for it. It's like $20. Yeah. It's, that's... that's uh, my percentage is so small, it's meaningless to me, so I don't... 
I'd like to see him cut it down. Uh, I prefer performing uh, to, to, you know, it's so mindless and you're here today and then you're gone uh, 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 to, to any other aspect. I'm not, I don't have much depth, really, and, and that's what I like. Okay, thank you. Mr. Newman, can we switch to the political arena here? Sure. <laughs> Mr. Newman, President Reagan is staunchly anti-communist, calling Russia an evil empire. He, pre he presents himself in a way obviously opposed to communist incursion into Central America. Do you think when he is reelected next week, yeah. he will invade El Salvador or Nicaragua, wading in on a wave of anti-communist uh -huh. American sentiment? Uh, no. <laughs> but I, I, I'd feel uh, more comfortable about not invading those countries were, were Mondale to be elected by some strange freak of fate. Uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> you show a lot of presence in your video, and I was just wondering if you've ever thought of acting, or has anybody ever approached now you about Now you're talking, acting? boy, what a mindless job that would be. <laughs> Someone else write your stuff and just uh, go to the, you know, they're complaining about, ooh, I have to get up at four in the morning and get into makeup, you know, j just, you know, just show me the way, you know, have a donut with the makeup lady and uh, not have to think, you know, of write anything, you know, sit at a piano and everything sound like three chords and sound like crap to you. Well, I'd take that up in a second, but I couldn't, wh who would I play? The, the friend of the leading man, you know, the old gig young parts, maybe. Uh, yeah, I was asked to do. <laughs> there were two. I was. I was. There were two offers I had. One was to do uh, Love and Bloom with that uh, Christopherson finally did. Uh, but I didn't want to do it. I couldn't do it. I'd be too self-conscious to read, you know, lines and stuff, you know, and be an actor. Uh, another was like they offered me to. One was a Cagney and Lacey they wanted me to do, <laughs> and then a, a Love Boat. <laughs> It was one that Sonny Bono, I saw it, Sonny Bono did it, and it was a guy who was afraid to sing without his sort of kiss makeup, and he, he, there was a blind girl or something on the boat, and he, he took his kiss makeup off, and, and, <laughs> and he found that he could move an audience just as himself, he didn't have to be in his kiss makeup, but I turned it down, and <laughs> I didn't do it. I regretted it too. Uh, Mr. Newman, to your left. Yeah. Uh, what do you think um, of the direction the music, the music industry is going, and um, what direction would you like to see it go? Jeez, I don't know. I'd like, uh, I, think it's getting, I think the music is getting a little better. You know, some of the in English synthesizer bands, and, and in some of the lyrics it's better. They're willing to admit to imperfections, you know, that worried about being ugly or worried about, you know, things we're all worried about, you know. It's not just all this superhero stuff, so it's a bit of an improvement. And there's more people who maybe don't have the technical musical knowledge to write stuff down, but they can play keyboards well, and so the music is sounding a little slicker. Lyrics are never going to be very important. I mean, I find myself even, it, lyrics are important to me when I write, but I find myself listening to Hall and Oates, and you know, going like this, and I don't care what they're saying much. <laughs> and, and uh, you know, playing ABBA's greatest hits and all this sort of regressive stuff. Uh, uh, I don't know whether I'd listen to myself much, you know, in the car radio. Uh, I think I would. Hard to say. Depends on whether it had the top up or down. <laughs> but the music, uh, the music business, is, if that's the question, has become absolutely uh, brutal. You know, cutting Van Morrison and uh, it's really ledger line stuff now. Money, 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 money. It, it didn't like the good old days at all. Um, since, Mr. Newman? Yeah. <laughs> um, since in your recent hit you profess to love L.A., how do you feel about raising your children in this um, sort of paradise? It's a di it's, I can't think of a more difficult place to raise kids uh, in a relatively privileged, either being very poor or a little privileged, I think is particularly tough in this town. There's so many temptations, you know, drugs and, and uh, peer pressures to cut your hair funny. and, and uh, <laughs> it's not a, I don't think it's a good place to raise kids. Right? And show business is an awful sort of, I, I don't consider myself too show businessly, but I mean, it's how I earn my living, and it's tough for kids to see that. It looks, it makes life look sort of easy, and, and life is not easy. I thought it was easy when I was here, but boom. 
when they told me these were the best years, I said, boo, this is the, life's going to be the worst. <laughs> but they sort of were. Yeah, Sex Mr. got better. But everything, else, <laughs> everything else got worse. Yeah, Mr. Newman, do you consider yourself cynical? And if so, can you make a defense of cynicism? No. I don't, cons I don't, I don't consider myself cyn uh, cynical about uh, uh, people as individuals. Uh, groups I got my doubts about, from the Cub Scouts on up. But if you sit next to someone on a plane, the odds are they're going to be a pretty decent sort of person, or, or, or uh, particularly in first class, no. But in, in <laughs> no, but just in general, I think people are all right. And I always see this stuff about me being cynical and all that stuff, but I don't think I am. I think the audience is able to recognize in my songs, hopefully, that they're better than the people in my songs. I mean, a lot of the people in my songs are pretty nasty uh, and cynical and all that, but I don't think I am particularly. I couldn't defend cynicism at all as a way of life. It's, it doesn't work. Over here. What a lie that was. Over a total, here. complete lie from beginning to end. Yeah. Hi. This is tough, you know, on me. I can't, <laughs> I can't see far enough to see if a mouth is moving. Okay, I think there's more bass in this mic over here. Let's hear your voice. When you yes, score a pure... <laughs> When you score a period film such as Ragtime or The Natural, um, do you do research or what do you do to pre prepare yourself? Do research. Yourself? I, I listen to a lot of, uh, uh, and, uh, I can't remember doing much for The Natural. Oh, yeah, I did. It was sort of the uh, uh, 1930s there, so I listened to a lot of uh, big band stuff, uh, most of which I didn't care much for. But the uh, music uh, uh, for Ragtime, I listened to a lot of Joplin. Joplin was the best rag composer. It isn't just an accident that he's the most popular. And, and you do have to do a lot of research. I enjoyed doing it, too. Yes. Um, what direction do you think the music department at UCLA should go? <laughs> when I was here, you could, t you could have gone either way. There were most people who were interested in teaching. Uh, like, I, was the, I think I was the best person in my composition class with, and not doing much. You know, I didn't have to work hard to be the best person in composition at, at, the, at that time, in all modesty. But I was awful in some other classes. What's that? Uh, I don't know where it is now, but there were some good people here. I didn't take advantage of a lot of it. I, I, uh, I should have found a place to park and not been such a fool. <laughs> I, w I would hesitate to say. Uh, I don't know. What, what, what are they doing now? I mean, what are they into? I don't know. I asked this question for someone else. <laughs> oh. Uh, okay. Well, I think they should go in an upward direction. Yeah, over here, this side. Right? Well, where's here? Oh, I see you, yeah. Uh, wondering if you still uh, have a fascination with the South, as yeah. you did, did a few years ago. I, I still do. Uh, I love New Orleans. I lived there briefly when I was little. My mother and her family are from there, and uh, uh, I'm still interested in it. I don't think I'll write about it a whole hell of a lot. I've gotten all the mileage I can get out of it, but, but uh, I've milked it for all it's worth. But I'm still interested, yeah. Uh, you've been working with the same producer for a number of years on your albums, and I'm just kind of curious about the division of labor between you two and you know, who makes what decisions in the studio and you know, what sort of influence he has over you and that sort of thing. Influence and in, in, you know big psychological influence. You know, telling me that you know you're all right. Uh, this stuff's as good as your stuff was uh, six years ago. Uh, it's not horrible. It's not as horrible as you think it is. It's it's important. Uh, you'd be surprised how crazy everyone is in the studio. Uh, uh, you, and when you start writing, uh, the, the people I know, uh, uh, Paul Simon or Ricky Lee Jones, uh, conscientious sort of writers. You get real scared when nothing comes, you know, for a while. Real scared. It's a, it's a uh, sort of a sobering thing to sit there for a week or so and, and not be able to come up with anything because you don't know how you do it in the first place. And it's important to have someone that when you, to play for that you trust. And Lenny uh, Warnker's always been there for me. Now he's president of the record company, so I can't reach him. But, but, uh, but he's been a great help to me. In the studio, you know, I do the musical stuff, and he'll judge about performances, vocal performances. And, Guitar solo performances. He'll talk to drummers for me, which I've never been able to do very well. Or, <laughs> and, uh, things like that. 
I also like to ask you to use Ry Cooter more. Give him a few more solos on your next album. I would, you know, I would if I, I have the type of thing. I definitely yeah. will. Mr. Newman, yeah. um, I heard you say on the Rick D show that you like the Valley. Is that your favorite part of Valley? I like, uh, oh, oh, I like what? The Valley. I like the Valley. All right, uh, uh, it's nice and flat, and it looks like. Uh, <laughs> In the summer, it looks like a different country out there because the way people dress. It looks like parts of Oregon at times. It's hard to explain. You know, the shirts are the short sleeve. Well, I can't really explain it. But I, I like it. I lived out there. Uh, and you could walk to places. And uh, I like it. Yeah, I got nothing against it. My kids hate it, but uh, uh, that's their problem. Thank you. <laughs> um, can you elaborate on the idea of why you think the people of L.A. would be idiots to... Adopt, um, I can't believe I, I said anything uh, that injurious to my own future. <laughs> uh, well, look, you know, if they start looking at my other work, is what I thought. You know, I went down there to the city council, where I hadn't been since the fourth grade. We made a field trip there. <laughs> and I saw all these guys, and then... And, uh, you know, if they start listening to songs like Redneck or Christmas in Cape Town, or I mean, they're not going to do anything for me. You know, I'm not John Denver. I've done some stuff that was, was awful, both, per, both privately and publicly, you know. But uh, uh, the song itself, they sort of can't deny that, that people really like it. I mean, the streets I named Century Boulevard and the Imperial Highway, you know. I mean, I mean, I can fool around with Johnny Carson and say, oh, yeah, it should be the song. But I mean, look at the streets I picked. I didn't pick the Miracle Mile. And, uh, 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 and there's a bum in there. But you know, they can't deny that people really like it, you know, so maybe it will be named uh, official song and I'll get a degree and everything. <laughs> all those councilmen, you know, I just seen them on tel I've just seen them on television. They're all sort of different heights. You know, John Ferraro is about three feet bigger than Gilbert Lindsay. I had no idea. I was shocked. <laughs> anyway. This is a short person asking a question over oh, here. Oh, well, let's, let's take the next one. <laughs> you're, not, you're not short. <laughs> Why am I on my tiptoes then? Yeah. Um, what do you do for fun? Uh, oh, read. And, and, uh, <laughs> I like to travel, actually, you know. Uh, that's about it, you know. Television's wearing out for me. I used to, like, be a big sports fan, but I began to lose it a sport at a time. First pro basketball went, and then... Uh, Pro football. I, I'm, I'm sort of left with college football now and, and baseball. Are you, are you married now? Yeah, what, I'm married with uh, uh, three children. What does your wife think of your success? Does she take part in it? Yeah, she likes it all right, I think. You know. <laughs> okay, uh, thank I, you. I, sure, pleasure. Ms. Newman, um, yeah. you've, the soundtracks you've done are Ragtime and uh, Natural. I don't know if you've done any others, but those are both, they were very good, but they were also period. Yeah, they were. Um, films. Have you been offered any soundtrack uh, work for mo modern films, and have you accepted Yeah, I have. Not? It's just coincidence. Uh, I've been offered lots of films, and those are the ones I choose to do. I, I chose them sort of irrespective of w what I thought of the movie, uh, but they needed music badly. It was like music was important and, uh, uh, to those pictures, and, and that's why I did them, and I was interested in the period of ragtime, and, and interested in the big, you know, the natural. I mean, Redford hits a home run. They, they have a shot of the good girl, shot of the bad girl. He runs around the bases. Without music, you know, they're, they're, you know, 30 million in the hole. If the music doesn't work, it was like a challenge. You know, I hesitate to use that word, but uh, that's why I did it. But it had nothing to do with them being period things. Do you have any favorite, specifically, film score, scores? Uh, Cycle was a great score by Bernard Herrmann. Uh, How Green Was My Valley by uh, my Uncle Alfred was a great score. What about modern uh, scores? Jerry Goldsmith did a bunch of great ones. Uh, my own, you mean? Not necessarily your own. But, uh, uh, Nina Rota's stuff was good. Morricone did a picture called Fraulein Doctor, which was an absolutely horrible movie. It was a war movie, but it was a great score. Uh, a lot of times I'll watch pictures and had not have noticed what's gone on and just listen to the music. Johnny Williams stuff is good. He's always getting ripped, you know, because everything sounds the same. But what the hell is he supposed to do in those pictures? You know, the rockets going off, and uh, I don't, un I don't know what anyone else could do. You couldn't, you couldn't do him much better than he does. Them. Thank you. Sure. 
Mr. Newman, you yep. re- over here, other yep. side. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you recently, Don't move your mouth when someone else is here. <laughs> you recently came through Los Angeles on a tour with James Taylor. Right. Um, are you planning on any tours in the future, and if so, when, and will you be coming back to Los Angeles? <laughs> Maybe next time. I'm doing this uh, Steve Goodman uh, tribute thing, which is just a couple of... Uh, but it's with a, like a cast of thousands. I don't know what I'm going to do. Just two songs th- at the Pacific Amphitheater. Yeah. Uh, maybe next summer again. I like that, you know, playing those summer dates. No one listened and I made a lot of money. <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure. Hi, Randy. Hi. What do you think of the current U.S. political situation and also what do you think of reggae music? I like reggae music very much. The U.S. Uh, political situation... Uh, they're very scared about uh, Reagan in Europe. You know, I was just there playing, and he make, they're excessively scared about him. Things sort of run themselves, except for the Supreme Court. That's what worries me. It's going to be real bad, you know. If I decide to become a criminal, I think my Miranda rights will be gone. And True. Lots of other things will be gone, too. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Newman? Yeah. I was wondering if you had a dog, and if so, what's his name? Yeah. <laughs> I had a dog. I have a dog named Rocky. He's a uh, Sheltie. He's named after those uh, movies. I, there used to be this when I was a kid. There used to be this cowboy star called Rocky Lane, and I, the dogs I had have always been called Rocky. You know, since I was a little boy. I petted him just uh, about a year ago. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Newman. Yeah. What do you think about the effects of um, radio on uh, different kinds of music? What do you think about? I mean, what I what I really. Uh, I know what you mean. I think. It's a tremendous so. question. Um, what do you think about the, effect, the effects of radio are on the popularity of different kinds of music? Uh, it has a big effect. I'm, you know, if I tried, I, I, I thought of trying to figure it out. There are things that uh, I've had on my albums that if they played them on the radio, they'd sort of disappear and wind noise and, and uh, car noise and stuff. I wouldn't change for it, but it has, it has a big effect, you know? Classical music still works, you know, if you shut all the windows and, and uh, drive out in the country. But uh, uh, what seems to work is, you know, uh, uh, real noisy stuff that gets over all the noise. It, it has had a big effect. It's, real, it's, uh, it's worth a study of some kind, you know? Thank you. Sure. Um, uh, what bands does your eldest son listen to, and how do you feel about the, the punk? My eldest voice? son used to listen to... Uh, straight, absolutely hardcore punk. You know, X was way too far to the right for him. And, and uh, he liked bands like Suicidal Tendencies that also have a gang attached to them. Uh, he was in a, a punk band called Smashed Infant. That was their name for a while. And then they, they changed their name to uh, Armed Response. And when he was in, uh, he, he, you know, I sent him away to school, actually, which hurt to uh, Colorado, and now he likes sort of yes, and uh, he's, he's, he's kind of mellowed out. That stuff, I listened to a lot of that stuff with him. I liked, jeez, uh, I'm trying to think of this band I like. They have a song about a Valium and a, and a, and a 64 Valiant. God, I, they were on A&M, kind of. They were good. They were funny. Punk band. Damn, I wish I could remember their name. Does anyone know? No. But anyway, he's uh, changed. And, and uh, my youngest kid is sort of a mod, you know, who wants to buy expensive coats. And, and uh, <laughs> he liked Duran Duran. He just stopped liking them. That was all he had in his life. Well, I was worried about his... Uh, it was all Duran Duran in his room. You know, I was worried that his sexuality would be confused. <laughs> because I think they do that purposely, you know. I don't mind... Uh, uh, Need, needless to say, I don't mind at all anybody's sexuality, but they were, they, they were sort of tricky about it. You know, they wanted to get all the little girls, but they wanted to get all the little boys, too, and they, you know, kind of blur it on purpose. I don't think they had any uh, 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 genuine uh, 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 sexual preferences in that way, but I just, I just didn't trust it, you know? Hello. I wonder if you've ever met uh, Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. What was his reaction to that, uh, the line? Didn't hear song? a thing, you know? Didn't hear a thing. It was just, he was just a, he's on another plane. He just Do you like his music? Ignored are, you, it. are you cynical of his music? Or, and have you seen his show since he's in town? I hear, I hear you know, I don't, I'm, I haven't, I've talked to many smart people who love his music and love his rock and roll. I, I love Nebraska by him. But I don't love all that. St- I don't think he's as good a writer as Neil Young is, say. Uh, 
And that's not a, a particularly popular stance. So I think he's a better writer than Neil Young. No, I, I don't. I think that his uh, reputation is inflated a bit. I, I don't think he's the best there really ever was. And, and that's what people would have you believe. It's a little like the Piltdown Man, I think. Thanks. Since you dislike writing so much, how do you go about writing your songs? I just hang in there and take it. I haven't been doing it. I was going to start last week uh, and make myself stay in four hours a day, you know, in a room until I come up with something. But I wasn't making it, you know. I'd, I'd uh, last about 40 minutes. and It was like it was in school, you know. I'd take my watch off, put it down so I wouldn't look at it all the time. And then I think I was in there for about an hour, but I guess I was in there 40 minutes to make me feel good when I looked at the watch, and it would be 20 minutes. And uh, I just, you know, maybe next week, you know, I'll settle into it. One more question. Yeah. Um, I saw your show recently with uh, James Taylor. I wonder yeah. how it was that you ended up touring with him, especially since it seemed to me you two were so different, especially in performance. Uh, we're different. It was, it was a... Uh, uh, you know, there are towns that, 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 that I couldn't play without him, you know, where he was just a definite headliner. You know, in Oklahoma City, I mean, I, could, I couldn't uh, fill a phone booth. <laughs> but but uh, with him, we draw, you know, six, seven, eight, ten thousand people in there, and there were towns when I helped him enormously. Uh, and he's a very, very nice fellow, you know, which is... Uh, so basically, it was just a commercial type of... Uh, I mean, that's, that's what not, he He had a nice, uh, polite audience, you know, when there were towns that... that where they hadn't seen me before, and my audience was all right to him, I think, basically. Uh, uh, was it uh, surprising to you sometimes, some of the reactions from crowds, especially like I, I thought at the amphitheater, most of the people went there to see uh, James Taylor, and uh, a lot of them were shocked or, or pleasantly uh, surprised by your uh, music. I don't know. I thought at the amphitheater maybe it wasn't. It would, uh, if, if ever there was a place where more people came to see me, it was probably the amphitheater. So if... <laughs> if uh, uh, if there are more people to see James Taylor there, you can imagine what it was like in Gastonia, South Carolina, you know? Uh, uh, Mr. Newman, I'm sorry. We have time, I think, for just two more questions. So uh, if anybody else would like to ask another one. Okay. Sure. Well, I've got nowhere to go. Um, you've talked uh, today in an interview. It's on your left. Oh, I'm sorry. You've, ta <laughs> you've talked today in an interview about how much you read. I was just wondering uh, who are some of your favorite writers and whether they ever uh, influenced some of your writing. Uh... Uh, they probably do. Uh, I like the you know Russians, uh, uh, Tolstoy and, and uh, Elmore Leonard and uh, uh, Dostoevsky. Uh, I like history very much. I, I, I remember one book specifically that uh, that I got a song out of. It was uh, uh, Will Durant had the whole series of books about uh, you know the history of the world, and the first volume was called. Our Oriental Heritage. And I said, well, Jesus, you know, it's like he's consigning Chinese history to being, in his title at least, it was a great book, though, uh, to being Our Heritage. So I wrote this song called Yellow Man that was sort of inspired by that, uh, like an old 1930s gross production number. Uh, but I can't remember any other specifics. Uh, a V.S. Naipaul, I liked his older stuff better than I like his new stuff. Uh, Dickens is nice. Uh, uh, I like that. Uh, Okay, Randy. Um, I just wonder about your commentary on uh, Duran Duran. Do you think uh, musicians... I don't think Duran Duran's that bad, to tell well, you the truth. Um, okay, yeah, they're, they're all right. Yeah. Anyways, um, do you think uh, musicians and other performing artists ought to take some sort of responsibility in their work as far as, uh, as, far as their influence on people? No. No, you think... I think you ought to be left alone. It's too dangerous to start. You know, it's just their pictures that worried me. You know, they when you get you get conservative when you have an eleven-year-old kid. You know, you want to say, what is this? What's this guy trying to do? Why has my kid got pictures of these fellas up all over his room? You know, so uh, uh, I looked at them and 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 it it it, it bothered me. You know, I mean, I, I wanted to take one of them out myself. <laughs> okay, thanks. Right. Oh, okay. I've got a quick question. Yeah. How do you want to be remembered, like, 50 years from now? I don't think I will be. <laughs> I'd like to be remembered as a conscientious, you know, person who tried his, his hardest and uh, finally got his honorary degree and <laughs> <laughs> doctor of phonographs. Uh, you know, it's, 
like that. But I think what will be remembered in pop music is hits. You know, uh, what's remembered now. I think there's already evidence. It isn't going to be like Schubert, you know, who's discovered 30 years after he dies. I mean, I'm not, it's not going to be like, ooh, this guy was great, you know, uh, he's going to be famous. It, it, you know, it, what's remembered now is what was hits 25 years ago. It's not, there's no, there's no sort of undiscovered great writer being discovered. This is, that's what I think will happen. So I don't think I will be remembered except by my immediate family. <laughs> Do you have anything else that you'd like to say to us? No, I enjoyed it uh, very much. I'd go on a while uh, 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 if they let me, but as usual, the bureaucratic <laughs> parasites of the... Uh... But anyway, thank you very much. It was a pleasure.